yellow bill form bill. There's one or two of them around. I haven't heard any of the dwarf form use. Remember, they can have this mutualistic relationship, a symbiotic relationship, where the hornbills will forage with the dwarf mongoose, and it's actually, in some areas, it's got to the point where the hornbills will wait for the dwarf mongoose to wake up, or vice versa. So each one will wait for the other, and then they'll go out foraging together. Oh, there's an Ellie up ahead, just crossing the road. Wondering where the Ellie's were, and seeing them on the tracks. I think it's worth maybe trying to catch up with them. We'll come back to see them. Seeing them on the tracks. when my little dog took her growls and something growls back just behind your head it's quite fun <laughs> so as I say they, they don't know it's just maybe canvas to them it's a wall it's quite thrilling actually it's quite amazing to be part of a bush like that I mean, on occasion he's uh, woken me up growling Although one time I did actually manage to have a look at what he was grabbing at and it was actually a kudu. So uh, that was probably a few months after I had him when he was still trying to work out what these weird and wonderful creatures were. So now he's actually getting to the stage where he knows what's happening. But I think it's probably, it was probably a bush pig or a honey badger or something like that. She could be the main shark because as soon as she turned to walk, the rest of the family actually turned and followed. She looks like she's got one tusk that's a little bit higher than the other. Ah! Is that Dana in Ohio? might have to repeat the names. They sounded quite pretty though. Amala, which means grace. Amara. And Anuli, which means joyful. Uh, does she say which language? Send me which language uh, that's in, that'd be great as well. Anula and. See, I'm, I'm forgetting them already. <laughs> that one I might have to write down, say over and over again. Oh, I think there's a date crossing the road. Say that with the little 
<laughs> Maybe she got her way after all. <laughs> from the notches in the ears of the mother. But I'll say it probably is her. on the top of the right here. Looks like mum to me. Yes, lady. <laughs> Amazing. I wouldn't have expected her to bring baby back here so quickly after she felt threatened by the possibility of lions coming through. But maybe she just didn't like the other den site. Could be that she just preferred this one. right ear. Maybe send in your boat. We'll see if we can get a short list and then we can uh, go from there. And I will ask on drive this afternoon as well. I think they will name them tomorrow morning. We've got suggestions in from all over the world. I'm now looking at my, I've, I've been making sketches of the ears and actually looking at my ears looking at the ears I had the, it was actually the, the notches in the top of the ear on the left ear not the right ear this is why I do make sketches so my mistake everybody so that's why she didn't come back to this den site. This is a different mother completely. It's not even our mother from the cheetah cut line den. She's got notches the right ear on the side of the right ear. So this mother, she's got. It's almost like she's got a flat ear, her right ear's flat. So that's the same as our Untumbella mother, but on her left ear, she's got the notch on her left ear. So we have two little pups. I always see why she went to that hole, the other pup when she'd been in that hole. So we 
we've actually got three mothers, always perhaps roughly around the same age. I'd say these ones are probably just a little bit older than Dumbella. Maybe slightly older than the two that are on Cheetah Club Line. Maybe just over two months old. She's a little bit bigger than the other one. So we might have another male and female pairing. actually an old abandoned termite mound and the hole would most likely have been dug by an aardvark trying to get some food from other termites and once the termite mound has been abandoned the termites no longer try and patch up the damage that's been done to the mound so it stays as a hole and there might be several holes around the mound. And they've actually found up to 50 different species of mammal or animal could actually utilize these abandoned holes. Porcupines, civets, and hyenas, and their offspring, jackal, and even birds have been known to nesting holes that are made by aardvark, the anteating chat, which is a bird that we don't get here, so it does actually have the nest just in the lip of the hole. And I think, if memory serves me correctly, the ruddy shelter as well, also a nesting hole in the abandoned aardvark burrow. So just to update anybody that may have just joined us, this is a completely different mother. We thought this was a Tumbella's mother, looking at the notch in her ear, but I'd actually forgotten that the notches that are in the top of the ear are actually under the left ear rather than the right ear of the mother. You can see quite clearly here the notch, she's missing almost like the top of her ear. see a notch in her left ear but it would still be nice to get a full on shot if she turns her head just to see if I wasn't seeing things or whether the notch was actually there. About the uh, genitalia of the hyena but um, for those of you who aren't aware the female has a lot of testosterone in the body and because she's got so much testosterone in the body the female spotted hyenas have actually developed genitalia that looks like that of a male. So it's very difficult to tell the difference between the male and female by looking at the genitalia. So you'll see on these pups, they do have uh, the genitalia that's fairly old. 